Hi guys. Happy Wednesday. It is not my normal Facebook live time, but we decided to, let's see here, loading the comments. <laughs> Give me just a second. Okay, great. Sorry. I'm still working out this new program that I'm using for our Facebook lives and uh, it takes a second for everything to like kind of catch up because I've got a couple of different camera angles going on and I've got um, the comments that are I, I kind of have to sync everything together so it takes just a second so I apologize thank you for being patient with me it's it's all kind of new um, one thing that I will say though I can't see hi I can't see you guys as you're coming in which I think is kind of sad because I like it when I can see that <laughs> you know I can see who's coming in I can't see that anymore so all I can see is your comments and um, so yeah there's Janice hi Janice I'm glad you're here so like I was saying it is not our normal Thursday tutorial I will be with you tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. for our tutorial um, this is just kind of an extra because we're extra here at Jesse James Feeds. I'm giving you guys an extra project. Oh, so yeah, this one is close to my heart. I know this one is close to Sarah's heart. This is a program that is really, um, it's really important to not just, just, not just Jesse James Feeds, but a lot of, um, people in this industry and this is a way that we can share it with uh, you know everybody else who doesn't work directly in the industry if you're just a, a customer um, this is a this is a way for us to share that with you so we're talking about the beads of courage and I know last week Sarah did a video on the beads of <laughs> thank you <laughs> Last week, Sarah did a video on the Beads of Courage and kind of talked to you guys a little bit about what it's all about and what it means to um, some families that are going through rough times. So I'm just going to kind of give you like a brief breakdown of that. And then we're actually going to use the beads in a necklace project um, because it's not just it's not just about the Beads of Courage. You can take your bead and use it however you want to. So yeah. That's what we're going to do. So we're talking about the Beads of Courage. We're talking about the Carry a Bead program. So over on jessiejamesbeads.com, you can go and get a Carry a Bead. And it's this little package that will come to you. And it will have two little beads and a charm that come with it. Mine are little pandas. Everybody's are different. Okay. And you're going to get two little pandas. Or you're not going to get two little pandas. You might. I don't know. You're going to get two beads regardless. And the beads, you they're on a safety pin, and you safety pin them to your clothing, and then you wear them throughout your day if you want to, or if you're going to do something special, um, if you're going on some sort of adventure. It really is, t it's totally up to you. And as you're wearing the beads, you're going to fill that bead with love and positive thoughts for the child that this bead is going to represent. Okay, so you're getting two of them. One of them you get to keep. One of them you're going to send it back to the child that is going through some some tough stuff, you guys. It really is some tough stuff and it's, you know, I'm a parent, so it's it's I can't even begin to imagine. Um it's giving hope and encouragement to these kids that are going through treatment for various diseases and just really hard things where they are spending some time in the hospital and they're being poked and they're being prodded and they're having tests done and it's just a really it's difficult for adults to go through i can't even imagine what it would be to be a child to go through it so you get these beads and the beads to the child represents their accomplishment. Every single thing that they've gone through in their treatment, every step along the way, they get a bead and that bead kind of signifies a milestone in their treatment process. And so it's just, I don't know, it's, it's hard. It, before I was aware of beads of courage, because I've been, I've been, around Beads of Courage for a long time. Um, but before I was aware of Beads of Courage, it was hard for me to figure out how to take what I do as a designer, I create jewelry, how to take that and give back, right? It's like, it's hard to figure out, well, I make jewelry, you know, what, what, how am I gonna give back? This is the way to give back. This is the answer to that question. So if you are 
a jewelry maker out there and you are struggling with that same question, okay, I love what I do and it's great and everything, but I want to use this for greater good, this is how to do that, okay? This is just one little way to do it. So go over to jessiejamesbeads.com, grab your carry a bead on the, let's see, September 15th, that's coming up. And if I'm wrong, Sarah, let me know because I'm not, I'm, I might have that date wrong. It's National Carry a Bead Day. And you get your bead. If you order today, you'll, you'll get your bead in time to wear it on Carry a Bead Day. And you just fill that bead up with love and positive thoughts and really send some special love to that kid that, that definitely needs it. And in your package, you're going to get um, a story about who, who your bead is for. And I can't even, like, I can't even, I can't even tell you about mine because it, it will seriously make me cry. So anyway, I'll show you a picture of her and she's sweet and she's wearing all these beads to show, you know, what she's been through. And I just, I can't even imagine. So I'm going to move on because I'm not here to cry. <laughs> I am going to show you guys what you do with your beads because like I said, you get two. So one of them, you're going to wear it. Well, you're gonna wear both of them. Wear one of them, and then the other one, you're gonna send it back to the child, and you can write a little story for them or whatever, share some encouragement with them. But the one that you're gonna keep, you can keep it on its safety pin if you want to, but why not turn it into a piece of jewelry, right? I mean, then it's something special that you can wear all the time, and it will always remind you of the child that you sponsored. So, all right, woo! <laughs> This is an emotional one for me, you guys, plus the fact that today is 9-11, and I mean, this is just an emotional day for a lot of people. It's a tough one, so I'm glad that we're all here to be together. All right, <laughs> let's move on. Okay, so this is exciting. Some of you joined me last week on my Facebook Live to use this program. We're going to use it here. Everybody cross your fingers, okay, because this is this is a new one. So without further ado, let me show you what we are creating today. Ta-da! <laughs> so now I can show you a still beauty shot of what we're going to be doing. And then I can switch you back over to me. And I don't know if you noticed or not, but there is the Jesse James Speeds logo. Like, let's see. I put my hands you can see it it's right there do you see it it's kind of hard because it's in black I'm gonna see if I can get Sarah to send me one that is written in white so that it'll it'll show up against me I probably should not have picked a black shirt to wear today so got a little tricks up my sleeve and if you're curious about who I am well there you go I'm Sarah Ellis and welcome to today's tutorial <laughs> all right so let's get started I'm gonna bring you guys over here because we're gonna use some fun beads today all right so here we are. <clears throat> we are gonna use new Dakota Stones design elements mixes. Oh yes, we are. I'm so excited. Okay, so you guys know that I, on a regular basis, check the jessiejamesbeads.com website for what's new. And I always click on the new tab and check out the things that are going on there. <clears throat> and this is one of the things that is brand new. Who does not love the Dakota Stones? I certainly do. And there are some new ones. This is just one of them. This is the Jade Jungle Mix. And you can tell just how new this is because that's actually written in marker. <laughs> I, got, I got one of the samples before everybody else. So yeah, super, super special. Check this out. This is really beautiful. Again, it's that three-tiered design. Hi, Mimi. I'm so glad you're here. It's that three-tiered packaging that is so so popular everybody really loves this I like it because it gives you a chance to kind of see everything that you're getting before you open it up so on this top level you've got all of these jade beads you've got them in some fun shapes you've got some rounds you've got some rondelles some kind of cube shapes and then there are also these nuggets they're absolutely stunning and then you've got another layer that has tassels and these cage beads and some of these rhinestone spacers and then the bottom layer has some check glass beads that go along with everything. <clears throat> Excuse me. And of course, everything is put together beautifully. Like these colors all together are stunning. Just really, really beautiful. And I always try to keep the packaging nice, but you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out. So, well, I tore that one a little bit. That's okay, because that's, we don't care about the packaging, right? We care about the beads on the inside. So, 
I'm gonna use, hi Sylvia, I'm gonna use some of these beautiful jade beads, okay? Look at those, oh, they're so luxurious. I mean, there's just nothing, nothing that beats gemstone beads, I'm sorry, but there's just not, they're just amazing. And then we're gonna use a little bit from this as well to mix in, but I just wanted you guys to see these jade stones because they're just so beautiful. All right, and so, like I said, my beads are little pandas. And so I think that the, the jade mix was just the perfect uh, kind of complement to the little pandas. Aren't these adorable? They're so, so cute. So these, the beads are actually handmade by a, um, a bead artist, and that's also on the back of your Beads of Courage Carry a Bead packaging. You get to see the name of the artist who created the beads too. So that's, that's super important as well. All right, then last but not least, we're gonna use some fairy silk because it's just beautiful. I believe this is from, I think this is the Maui. I'm not positive about that, but it's this beautiful green ombre. And it goes really, really well with all of the beads here. And that green, I don't know, with the pandas, it really just all kind of works together really, really well. I don't know, I think that the the, the green kind of reminds me of you know, the eucalyptus and all the good things that the pandas are eating. So I thought it worked out really well. It's a cute little combination. <clears throat> all right, so let me bring up the necklace so you guys can see what it is that we're doing. All right, so that's the direction that we're going. We're gonna use our fairy silk as the length portion of our necklace. We're gonna use some flat artistic wire, which is fun. I always like using flat artistic wire and we're gonna use a quick link and then just a few pieces of wire. So this is fairly simple and it's really kind of straightforward. So let's get started with the first easy steps of this. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our fairy silk, bamboo, yes, bamboo. That's what I was, that was the word I was looking for. It's koalas that eat eucalyptus, right? I totally got that wrong. <laughs> you know what I meant, <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so we're gonna take our fairy silk and we're just gonna fold it in half so that we've got the two ends together here. And I'm gonna go ahead and take off one of my little pandas off of the, um, the safety pin. But I'm gonna leave this like it is because we are gonna use this on the safety pin at the end. I'll show you how else you can incorporate this into your design if you want to. All right, so let's get, oh no, hold on. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, just trying to make some room here. All right, so we're gonna take both ends of our fairy silk and it comes down, I don't know if you've ever used the fairy silk before or not, definitely need to get some if you haven't, but the way that it is sewn, it comes to a point on each end and in order to get this through the um, the bead, it has a, a rather large hole, but it is, it's not super large. So I like to take the ends and just kind of twist them together, you know, just so that they take up less space and then stick the ends through my bead and then pull. And you know what, before we do that, better not do that yet. I forgot about the quick link. So we're actually gonna go ahead and thread this quick link on. Since it doesn't have, um, it's not like a jump ring, it doesn't have a seam, it's completely seamless. We're gonna go ahead and thread that on and just bring that down here to the center, okay? Don't wanna forget that part. All right, so go ahead and twist your two pieces together and then you just wanna slide your bead on and grab those ends and just give it a pull, okay? And that will very easily fit onto your fairy silk. So we just wanna bring this down to where our quick link is. Hi, Joy, I'm so glad you're here and you get to see it live. <laughs> all right, so I'm just bringing that all the way down to the bottom of the quick link, or I'm sorry, to the bottom of the the fairy silk up against the quick link. Now, if you want to, you can you can tie an overhanded knot here between the bead and the quick link, but I don't really think that it's necessary. It's more or less just a design choice if that's what you wanna do. You don't have to, okay? All right, so now I am gonna go ahead and add some of these beautiful jade beads to either strand, and then we're gonna move on to this stuff down here at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of the strands and I'm gonna tie it in an overhanded knot just to kind of create a little bit of a stopper for those beads. So the beads are not gonna lay up against the panda. They're gonna have their own little 
section here. So I'm going to tie an overhanded knot pretty close to the panda, but not right up against him. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Just an overhanded knot, not anything super special, just a regular knot. Okay. And then I just want to make sure that this knot is pretty much in the same the same distance away from the panda, okay? You just kind of eyeball it. You don't have to measure it. This silk is really forgiving, so if it's off by just a tiny, tiny bit, just loosen up or tighten one of the knots and it'll kind of work its way into the spot where it needs to be. You just gotta get pretty close. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be exact. Okay, so now I'm gonna take these cute little rondelle beads. So there were several of these there are six of these to be exact. So we're gonna put three on one side and three on the other side. And this is just standard stringing, there's nothing to it. Just wanna make sure that you get that little end through your bead. That's, that's really the only, sometimes it helps to use a pair of tweezers. See how I've got that little tiny tail sticking through there. If that's hard to grab onto, then use a pair of um, tweezers or a pair of pliers. And I'm just going to thread on three of these little rondelles. Just want to make that fairy silk behave. All right, it doesn't want to. There we go. Well, come on now. All right. And just go ahead and thread on the last one for this side. And then I'm going to slide all these down right up next to the knot that we just made. Okay right there and I'm going to tie another overhanded knot then that's it's not necessary but it just kind of helps to keep those beads in in their own little space here if you don't tie this knot then the beads are going to move around on you and if you want that that's fine it's up to you it really makes no difference but I like to just make sure that they stay right there right in the center of the necklace so there are three of those and then I've got three for the other side as well and then we will move on to the center portion of our necklace. We're gonna make some little dangles and we're also gonna use that safety pin with the bead, the other panda bead on it. We're gonna use that as a dangle as well. Um, and it's really kind of cool because it's on a safety pin so you can take it off and it doesn't, you're not gonna mess with the, the way the necklace looks. You know what I'm saying? It's, you don't have to take anything apart in other words. All right, so just going ahead and tying another overhanded knot there. So now we have our cute little beginnings of our necklace. And <clears throat> let me go ahead and talk about the ends because for this necklace, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So I didn't add any hardware to the ends of this. Instead, I just left it so that you can just tie a beautiful bow with this because sometimes it damages, depending on what kind of hardware you use, it'll damage the end of your silk. And you know, sometimes I'm just not feeling it. You know, sometimes I just want something simple and there's nothing more simple than just tying a pretty little bow, particularly with this beautiful silk. I mean, come on, that's a pretty bow. If you had your hair up, this would be, there's no prettier way <laughs> to finish this off in my opinion so we're just sticking with a bow no hardware if you want to use hardware you certainly can you can add ju jump rings and you know you could use a, a ribbon end on that if you wanted to but I'm just keeping it simple all right so let's talk about what's going to go in the center here so I'm going to take a couple of pieces of this flat artistic wire. You can also get this over on jessiejamesbeads.com. This is gold colored wire. And, <clears throat> excuse me, it is just, it's just flat. I mean, there's really just no other way to describe it. <laughs> this is flat wire. It is 21 gauge. So that's gonna give you kind of an idea of the thickness of it. It's not super thick at all, um, but you do have this nice flat surface on it that you can do a lot of different things with. And so that's what we're gonna do. I have cut one piece that is, um, I believe, let me double check with my crazy ruler. I believe this is one, nope, it's two inches. 
So I've cut one piece that is two inches long, and then I have also cut two other pieces that are one and a half inches long, okay? And those are gonna be the three pieces that are gonna go in the center of our necklace here. Now, one of the things that I really love, I'm gonna move this guy out of the way just so that we can focus on this. One of the things that I really love about the flat artistic wire is that you can change the texture of it with a hammer. Um, and that's what I'm gonna do. You can totally skip this step if you want to. It's not necessary, but let's be honest, who doesn't love to hammer? I love to hammer on things. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my chasing hammer, I'll show it to you in just a second, just to kind of dent up the surface of this. But that's not the only thing that you can do with your flat artistic wire. And if you guys are interested, we can use some flat artistic wire again in some other projects because it's fun stuff to work with. You can stamp on this. You can, um, once you have put some sort of texture on it, then you can use your patina paints on it. It's really, really cool stuff. There's a lot of different things that you can do, a lot of different uses for this kind of wire. So what we're gonna do, let me show you what the little, what the design is that we're going for. So I'm gonna take my chasing hammer and you can see it's got kind of that rough texture to it. We're gonna hammer on it a little bit and then I have added some silver colored um, German style wire to it just as an additional little extra decoration because this is gold colored wire and the quick link is the silver color. I wanted to find a way to kind of tie the two metals together. So the way that I, I did that was just by adding a decorative touch of that extra wire to the flat artistic wire. So like I said, I've got a two inch piece here and I'm gonna bring in my block. Forgive my block, I meant to clean this off. <laughs> before this video and I just did not I did not get a chance to I've, I've got a lot of other things that I'm doing and cleaning this off kind of got pushed to the side so all right what I'm gonna do and actually I think it probably be easier if we go ahead and turn the end of this first so let me back up just a second I'm using a pair of small bell making pliers also available over on jessiejamesbeats.com if you do not have these you can use your round nose pliers as well the reason that i picked the bell making pliers instead of the round nose pliers though is because these are not tapered and your round nose pliers are tapered on them and so it doesn't make a, a perfect loop when it comes to flat wire so i'm just going to put the end of that wire right between the barrel of the pliers and i'm using the smallest mandrel here on the pliers to just roll this over and just create a little loop here and it's not completely closed that's fine i just want to go ahead and have that shape ready to go we'll open this back up and hook it onto the quick link when we're ready okay so go ahead and do your loop first and then use your loop as your handle for when you put this on the block so I'm gonna lay it on the block and you can see I've got my loop over here. It's not on the block because I want this to lay flat on the block. I'm gonna hold that in my fingers and then I'm using my hammer. And I'm not using the flat section of my hammer. I'm actually using the ball end of the hammer. And I'm just gonna tap. I'm not really hammering hard. I'm just gonna tap all over the surface of this flat artistic wire just to give it some texture. And it may change the shape of your wire a little bit. It may, you know, create a little bend in it or any number of things. You can see it, it's kind of created a curve. That's totally fine. That doesn't bother me in the least. If it bothers you, you can continue to hammer on this and switch directions and kind of guide that wire back to the straightness that you want, but it really, it does not bother me at all. I kind of like it. That's part of the reason that I, I like to add the texture. I know that it changes um, the entire piece of the metal. So keep that in mind when, when you're deciding whether or not you want to actually do that or not. Now I'm gonna put it up here towards the top so that that little bent over piece is up here on the top, just so that I can get to this kind of straight section here right before. And just give it a couple of little taps too, just to add some texture there. All right, so that is pretty much all I'm gonna do. That was not a lot of hammering. It was just enough to add just an extra layer 
of kind of sparkle if it would focus there we go the addition of that texture just kind of catches the light and really makes that wire shimmer so it's just an added element you can totally skip that step if you want to but I like it I like to do that with my flat wire all right so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a six inch piece of 22 gauge wire you can use German style wire for this you can use artistic wire it really makes no difference I am using the silver color though just to bring that silver down onto this gold colored wire and I'm going to lay this across the surface up here towards the loop that we wrapped just that little that little loop that we turned around and I'm going to give myself about two inches maybe a little less a little more it's whatever you feel comfortable with and I'm going to take that little tail and I'm going to wrap to the back and then I'm just going to wrap around the flat wire that's three times and I really don't have enough to go for, but if you can go for, then great. I'm gonna scoot it up just a little bit, and I'm gonna clean it up with my chain nose pliers just a little bit, so I'm gonna make sure that the, the wraps are nice and neat. I'm gonna come over here to the back, and I'm gonna use my cutter tool and go ahead and trim that off, okay? Now, before I move forward with this, I am going to squeeze all of this with my chain nose pliers. If you are worried that you're gonna mark up the surface of your wire by doing this, then use your nylon jaw pliers instead. It really makes no difference. Um, the, what you're trying to do is you just wanna tighten up those wraps and make sure that they're nice and flat against the surface of that flat wire, okay, so that there's not any room for movement here. So now when I pull on this, this is not gonna go anywhere, okay? All right, so now I'm just gonna wrap around kinda of like candy cane stripes around this. So I've come down a little bit, going at an angle, and then I'm gonna go behind, and then I'm gonna come to the front and around on the front, back behind, and I'm just gonna do this four times. This is this longer piece. This is the two inch section. So this is gonna hang in the center. So it is a little bit longer than the other two pieces that I cut. Okay, and one last time. So I've got four nicely spaced wraps. They're kind of hard to see, but I think you, I think you get it, okay? And now I'm gonna take the tail end of my wire and I'm just going to wrap around and I want these wraps to be close together and I had room for, uh, let's see, about four wraps there. I've got a little bit of the tail poking out, but that's okay, okay? So now I'm gonna come to the back and I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off. Hi, Susie from Arizona. Susie, how, how hot is it there? I ask for a reason because where I am, we had the hottest day of the season yesterday. We are way above average on our temperatures and I am so over it. I am, I am counting down the days till fall. All right, so you can see down here at the end, I gave that a little squeeze with my pliers as well, okay? Now, one thing to mention about the um, flat wire when you cut it, it does have a little bit of a jaggedy end to it no matter how sharp your flush cutter is, it still has that rough edge. So I like to take a fingernail file or a metal file and just barely, barely touch the end of that with the file just to get rid of any little burrs or little sharp pieces of metal that are sticking up there. But I don't have one on me, so I'm gonna skip that part. But if you're doing this at home, definitely hit that with a file. If you don't, this is gonna get cut, or not cut, it's gonna get caught, rather, on your clothing, particularly anything knit, any little piece of metal there will get stuck on your clothing, okay? So, this is the little middle section, and I've done the exact same thing to the two smaller pieces. So, the smaller pieces were, um, what did I say? This one was two inches, and these two were, I believe, an inch and a half. Yes, these two were an inch and a half. So I just went ahead and did the exact same thing to them. I put them on the block, I gave them a little bit of texture, and then I went ahead and wrapped around with some of that silver color wire just to bring that silver color down into the lower part of our, of our pendant, okay? So let me show you how this is gonna lay, okay? So this is the center piece, it's gonna lay right there in the center, and then these two go on the other edges. 
but that's not enough for me. I definitely want to add to this. You can see in the picture I've added some of those jade beads. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take some of these round jade beads <clears throat> from the mix. Let me move this over. And we are going to create our little head pins for this. And I'm also gonna add from the, let's see here, from the bottom level of the package, these little rondelles that have that, that metallic sparkle to them. Because who doesn't love sparkle, right? I love sparkle and anywhere I can add sparkle, I'm going to. <laughs> Okay, so to make our own head pin, I know some of you have got, have you, whoa, words, let me slow down a second. Some of you have seen me do this several times, but it never hurts to see it again. So that's what we're gonna do. I've got a piece of 22 gauge wire here. This is silver color, German style wire. You can use artistic style wire for this if you want. I'm, and it's about three and a half inches long. I'm coming in with my round nose pliers. I'm gonna grab that wire right, oh, <laughs> right at the tip, right there, okay? And I'm gonna turn the wire onto the pliers, just a loop around the very, very tip of the pliers. So I've gone around one time. I'm gonna go around a second time, directly underneath that first time. And then I'm gonna stop right where I started. So if you can see that little shimmer of light right there at my thumbnail where the wire started, that's where you wanna stop as well. All right, so I'm gonna bend the wire out this direction, okay? And now I'm taking that off the pliers. You can see I've got my two little loops here on the end. I'm gonna take the tail end of the wire and I'm gonna bend it so that it goes back through the two little loops, okay? Now I'm gonna use my nylon jaw pliers and I'm gonna grab that wire and I'm gonna use another pair of pliers to grab the tail end of that wire, and I'm just gonna pull it. And I'm pulling hard, you can see me shaking. I'm pulling hard. And that's gonna create that cute little rosette shape here where we tied a knot in our wire, and the long portion of the wire is actually coming up through the center, so it's not off-centered at all, which is why I really, really like this technique. Okay, so for our dangles, we're gonna use one of these beautiful jade round beads. I'm gonna thread that one on, and then we're gonna use one of these little metallic rondelles that was also in the design elements pack, okay? And we're gonna create a wrapped loop on this, so I'm gonna need my chain nose pliers. I'm gonna grab right over the top of the bead. I'm gonna bend 90 degrees, okay? taking that off the pliers and you can see the little section that we've got there, the little space. That is the perfect place to put our round nose pliers. I'm gonna guide that wire up and over and then I'm just gonna turn the pliers in my hand to get them out of the way so that I can go ahead and move that wire on around to create the loop, okay? Put this back on the pliers and I'm gonna switch hands now, I like to use another pair of pliers to do my wire wrapping, but you can certainly use your fingers if you want to, because we do have a long tail here. And I'm just gonna wire wrap three times. Okay, and then I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool and trim off the tail, okay? So I have a question for everybody before we move on. How is the audio? The reason that I ask is because the camera that is picking up the audio is about a foot and a half away from me. So if I need to plug in an external mic for these videos from now on, let me know if I'm not loud enough, okay? Because usually the camera that's picking up the audio is this one that you're actually seeing the image on. Okay, so. We've got our little wrapped loop here at the top. So we've got one of our dangles done, but we need three more of these to alternate with our pieces of flat wire. And just to save time, I've gone ahead and, hi Lynn, how are you? I went ahead and created the head pins for these since I already did it once. Just wanted to save some time. So I'm just gonna pop the beads on to these. Thank you, Sandy, I appreciate that. Sandy says it sounds fine to her, that's good. Good, good, good. 
I um, I have an external microphone. I don't mind to use it if I need to, but it's an extra wire. And if you guys can see all the wires that are going on right now, <laughs> it's, it's a little crazy. All right, so I just popped those guys on the head pins that I made ahead of time. And now I'm just gonna speed through these wrapped loops um, just to get through them so that they are ready to go. And then we'll connect them all to our quick link so that our necklace will be finished. If anybody needs me to slow back down and do the wire wrapping slow so that you can see it again, just let me know. Don't mind a bit to do that. All right, so there's one. I'm just gonna sit it down because I'm gonna come back and trim all the tails off at the same time. And here's the second one. Hey, Kathy, how are you? So glad you are here. All right, whoop, oh, dropping my pliers. Just gonna do the wire wrapping, like I said, real quick. And while I'm doing that, here, let me pull up a picture for you so you can kind of see where we're going in case you didn't see the teaser picture on Facebook. And better yet, while I do the last one, let's just bring up the whole picture. Oh, whoops, hold on, too many pictures going on. <laughs> So there is a picture of the finished piece. I'm gonna show you guys how to attach everything to that quick link on the bottom and how to incorporate your second um, carry a bead to this. Right, so <clears throat> it's gonna take me a while to get used to all the extra buttons that I've gotta push, but you know, so far it seems to be working out pretty good. What do you guys think about it? I think it's really neat to be able to show you guys a finished a finished picture as we're working. Okay, so all three of these are done and I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the tails on all of them. And then we're gonna use jump rings to attach these to the quick link um, just because I want them to hang a little bit lower than they would without a jump ring. So the jump ring is serving <laughs> Lynn says, did you get a new fancy camera setup? Kinda. I certainly would not call the setup that I have going on fancy by any means. I'm telling you, if you could see the mess that I'm sitting at, you'd be like, oh my gosh. It is, it is far from fancy. Um, <laughs> but it is really cool. I've got several things going on. I have several cameras going at the same time. And then I also have the ability to add a picture. I've got the, um, just kind of show off here for a second before we, before we go. So I can, I can, before we go forward, I mean, I can add, you know, the picture so that you can see it. I can add the picture so that it's the whole thing. Um, let's see, what else can I do? Let me show off for just a second. So I can use the picture and the camera. Hold on. Picture. Whoa. Maybe, there we go. I can actually split it so that you've got the working side over here, which is super cool. And then the picture over on one side, love that. I think that's really cool. And then of course I've got this, just in case you forget who I am. <laughs> and I have the Jesse James Speeds logo that I can bring up or bring out, which I love. I love it because there is no question when you come across this video on Facebook that Jesse James Speed's logo is right there in the corner. So you can be absolutely positive that you are in the right place. <laughs> All right, so we've got our four little bead sections with our jade beads and their wrapped loops. We have our three pieces of our flat artistic wire that we've hammered and added some extra wire to, and let's see, I'm missing something. Hold on, I think I'm actually gonna swap this one out. I have a bunch of these pre-made, this, this one is really crooked too, but that's okay. All right, so I have those, and now we're gonna bring in some jump rings because like I said, I want the these beads that are gonna be our little dangle components, I want those to hang just a little bit lower. So in order to achieve the look that I want, we're gonna use jump rings instead of just wire wrapping these straight on. All right, so 
Going to open up a jump ring. I'm using a six millimeter jump ring for this. If you've got eights, you can use eights. The original design was actually in eights, and then I swapped it out for the sixes. Um, but it's whatever you've got on hand. So I'm just going to go ahead and thread that on to the quick link and close that jump ring back. Okay. And now I want to add one of my flat artistic wire pieces. And to do that, I'm going to use, now you can use your bell making pliers to open this again if you need to. I'm just gonna kind of open it up just a tiny, tiny bit with my round nose pliers and hook it onto the quick link. And now instead of trying to get my um, round nose pliers back in there, which it, they will fit, but it's really not necessary. I'm just gonna take a pair of pliers and just kind of push that down so that it's closed. Because this is on the back, you're not gonna see it. Okay, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's not the most perfect little loop section because it's just going to lay flat. You'll never notice it. All right, so we're going to open up another jump ring and add another one of those beautiful jade beads with that beautiful metallic rondelle. And we're just alternating on these. And now for the flat artistic wire, I'm gonna use the larger piece. This is the long one, that was the two inches. I'm just gonna open that up and hook it on and then close it back. And I didn't even use my round nose pliers for that. I'm just using these bent chain nose pliers that I have on hand. For one thing, I'm not super, super worried about it marking up the metal, which it didn't do. But if I had used my hammer to make texture all the way up, I definitely would not be worried about whether or not my pliers were going to create a mark on that flat wire because it's already marked up, right? <laughs> All right, so adding another dangle. And then when we get everything added here, <laughs> Lynn says, thank you, you answered me as I posted a question about the flat wire. Well, what did I answer? <laughs> Is that what I'm working? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> it takes me a second. It's it's also really weird, you guys, that the, the questions are on a different screen, and I'm not used to that either. So I have to kind of keep my eyes on several several screens at once. So if it takes me a minute to get to your question, or it takes me a second to see it, I apologize. I just happen to look up right at the right time there. So yeah. It's just gonna take a little getting used to, but it's gonna be a little bit of getting used to for you guys too, right? I mean, you're used to me answering just right away and it there is a little bit of a delay and then it is on a different screen, so. But yeah, I think it's cool. I think all of this new camera stuff is gonna be, it's gonna be neat. I've learned all the basics, but there is so much more to learn, I feel like the sky is going to be the limit with what we can do with this program so it's going to be cool all right so when you lay all this down once you've got everything attached you can see that the beads and the flat artistic wire are just alternating each other on that quick link and it's just going to add some sparkle and some shimmer as you're wearing it there's a lot of movement going on here um, if you wanted to exchange the flat artistic wire for um, tassels, you certainly could do that. Or you could go ahead and add tassels to this now because in that design elements pack, there are some tassels that would look really, really beautiful with this. And some of those cage beads, I mean, you could really go crazy with all of the things that you could add here to the bottom of this. But more than anything, what I really want to add to the bottom of this is this carry a bead the second bead so like I said in the beginning you get two beads and you're supposed to wear the beads and then send one back to the child and you keep one of them so this is obviously going to be the bead that we keep and we can wear it over and over again and this is the bead that we're going to send back to the child and I want to continue to wear this until I'm ready to send it so I'm gonna hook this onto the quick link and you can add this anywhere you want to, to hang just as an extra dangle. Or I mentioned this to Sarah and since this is on a safety pin, you can actually safety pin this to your actual silk. And I did do that earlier I safety pinned it on there so then it's actually part of the length of the necklace and it looks really really great 
but Sarah mentioned that you might not want to poke a hole in your fairy silk. Um, so I get that. If you don't want to poke a hole in your fairy silk, I totally understand. It's the same as me not wanting to cut the ends. <laughs> so I, I can totally appreciate that choice. So if you don't want to pin this to the length of your necklace, then just come down here to the bottom and let's attach this. And to attach it, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take off the charm and we're going to add the charm separately with some jump rings but the um the panda i'm going to add him just like he is so i want him to be kind of in the center and i may actually have him on here the wrong direction i do okay so what i want is i want the bottom of the safety pin to be down here obviously gravity is going to help that but i put the panda on the wrong direction so let me take him off and slide him on so that he's going to hang the right way and when you're so when you're done and you're ready to send this off you don't have to take your necklace apart you just want to und undo your safety pin here at the bottom and it's ready to go um, but the charm I do want to add it and I'm going to add it with some jump rings I could have left it here on the um, the safety pin but it doesn't hang exactly the way I want it to being on the um, the safety pin. So I am gonna go ahead and use it by itself with two jump rings, just so that it'll hang nicely and be a, a cute little addition to our, our necklace. And I'm using two jump rings so that it will hang in the correct direction. Okay, and then I just wanna add this next to the safety pin. I'm gonna close that back. All right, so now I'm gonna lay everything out here. You can see, so you've got this really fun, really cute because you've got that cute little panda. And if you don't have a panda and you have any other bead, you know, if your carrier bead is not a panda, which I don't think they're all the same. I think that the beads are different and they're all beautiful. You can do this with, with any of them, you know, you, the, use your safety pin and your, your two beads in the exact same way and then just pick out a Dakota Stones mix that will go with it, pick out a beautiful piece of fairy silk that will go with it, and you can have the exact same project but specific to your, your beads in particular. So that's that. Awesome. Okay, now moment of truth. Let's see. Ta-da! <laughs> okay, so it's really weird. It's really weird. I'm, I'm at a different angle. The room is different, and it's really not, but it's flipped, which I didn't even know until last week when I used this program. Everybody was like, oh, the bookcase is on a different side. I'm like, it's actually on the, on the right side. It's, it's weird. So, yeah, on one camera, it's all going the right direction but on a different camera and the other camera it's all it's just weird it's just weird it's just a strange setup but it's been fun learning it and I hope that you guys enjoy it if um, you know if I'm working along and you want to see like the um, the finished piece if you don't want to see me or you don't want to you know if you need that that extra uh, not extra but if you need that photo to to reference as you're going just give me a shout. It's too bad that the um, the comments don't have like a bell that dings. Then that way I could hear, you know, ding, 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 hey, hello. <laughs> give us the picture so we can see see the picture. But we'll get there. It'll, you know, well, I mean, we won't get there with the ding, but we'll get there as far as me, uh, you know, checking back and forth and checking all the screens and making sure that I'm staying up to date with everything that you guys are saying. So I appreciate it. Thank you guys for joining me on this extra edition of our tutorials for the Facebook Live this week. Um, I will be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern, to do, um, I think it's gonna be an earrings project. Don't hold me to it. I gotta double check with the boss first. <laughs> um, but yeah, so tomorrow we're working on the Swarovski in um, the Peridot color. Oh my gosh, so pretty. So yeah, come back over to Jesse James Speed's Facebook page tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. We're gonna do another project. And uh, yeah, so you're not gonna be able to get rid of me. You, could, you get some more of me tomorrow. <laughs> 
All right, you guys, it's been awesome. I hope you have enjoyed today's project. Guys, go over to jessiejamesbeads.com and pick up your Beads of Courage carry a bead. If you order today, you'll have it in time for National Carry a Bead Day. Take a picture of yourself wearing your um, Beads of Courage carry a bead and post those on Facebook. And yeah, that's it. You guys have a wonderful rest of the night and I will see you first thing in the morning. Bye!